Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again, it's time for the Q&A, so let's go ahead and get this started. All right, first question. Hey coach, thoughts on Stan Efferding's vertical diet? He's a big proponent of optimal digestion and performance. I like how he covers all the bases, especially the micros, uh, cranberry juice for iodine, Greek yogurt for probiotics, D3 cod liver oil, chicken stock for digestive spinach for fat-soluble vitamins. Um, I've been doing this for about a month now, and I love the diet, but would like to hear your thoughts. You know, I've, I've kind of covered this in the past. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I, th I think it's an overall balanced approach, but I think people think that it's more special than it really is, right? It, is it a good diet? Sure. Sure. If you need just a structured program and you just want to get all your micronutrients and macronutrients, um, his food choices of this very small number of food choices will cover all of your bases and because you're eating the same foods day in and day out it can give good diet adherence but but that's true of any diet that's one reason like keto diets work strict diet adherence if you're only eating six or seven different foods your portion control becomes easier uh, additional appetite becomes less of a problem you get better satiety but then he has you eating very very easy to digest foods right but there's nothing magical about white rice versus other carbs it's just easy to digest beef isn't necessarily magical um, so it's not like there's anything super special about it other than he's just selected foods that are going to give you a small food selection which makes measurement and consistency easy. That, that's all it comes down to. A person could literally pick different foods that still cover all their bases and do the same thing. Um, so that being said, it, it's not like it's magical, but um, does it work? Yes, of course it works. Like I, It's very obvious that it works. It's a nice simplistic plan that covers all of your bases um, and allows for diet adherence and consistency. As long as you're happy with just eating those specific foods, he has you on. And definitely, you can use it for bulking, you can use it for cutting, and, and, and I think it'll work just fine. It's a totally reasonable plan. Um, it's just that I think people are pay, overpaying for some of it a little bit. It, it's a very simplistic approach. You really shouldn't need to buy anything to look at what he's done if you understand nutrition and realize the, the method behind it. Uh, but it's totally reasonable, and, and there's no reason a person can't get jacked or cut or whatever they need to do using the vertical diet, right? Just like any other approach. All right, next question. Jason, last year I started lifting around July, but stopped around November and started again last month. Would I still be able to make new gains if I'm still weak? Um, it's going to be a mixed question. The fact that you started lifting in July and then stopped a few months later and then waited five months to start training again, um, I don't think you're gonna make new gains. And, and I'm not trying to be a, a dick, but if you're that inconsistent to where you can't come in and be consistent in your training, unless there's some medical reason, like something physically happened, you were in a hospital or something, that you just couldn't keep it up, uh, no, you're not gonna make your new gains. Uh, because you're not really serious about lifting. You're not serious about having any degree of consistency. Like, you know, the fact that you would start for a few months and just take five months off. Now, I could be wrong. There could be some major thing in your life that caused that. Like, again, something major. But unless it was something absolutely major, you're not actually serious about getting in shape. Or lifting or anything else so it might be time to reevaluate what, what's going on in your life and your motivations because I'll tell you right now someone who, who is at that level of motivation no they're not going to finish out new gains they're just not they're not going to stick it out in the gym for a full year straight and follow a program and never miss a workout for a year straight um, so I would say get, get your shit together now that being said if you did get your shit together and you stick it out for the entire year without missing a single workout for any reason whatsoever, yes, you could still pull off your new gains. You could absolutely do it from this point. But um, I'm concerned about your mindset going into your training based upon just the time frame that you gave, unless you have one hell of a good reason. Like, you know, you were in jail or in the hospital, right? School got tough or work got tough not not really an excuse. Everybody deals with that. Top-level lifters deal with that. 
guys breaking world records in amateur sports like powerlifting deal with those problems and still break world records. So those, I don't buy those sort of excuses. Uh, so I'm giving you a little bit of tough love there. Uh, so stick it out, be consistent, get your head straight. All right, next question. Any clarity on the myth that bodybuilders live by in the best intro workout is a jar of baby food because of high carbs and it skips a step in digestion? Oh, Jesus Christ. Can, can we just purge bodybuilding from the face of the earth? Like, like literally, people have to stop listening to these, these absolute ignoramuses that get involved in this goofy, weird, delusional beauty pageant prostitution drug abuse cult. Um, God damn, bodybuilders, man. I mean, this is going to sound like a rant, but th this is a sort of silly shit that they come up with. Jars of baby food. And intra workout. Like, are you guys really that worried about intra workout? Your post workout and pre workout are way more important. You can't even absorb and digest food in the middle of training for the most part. Um, best of luck with that. Not to any real degree. Um, baby food. I heard a bodybuilding myth that sucking other dudes off is a really easy source of glucose and protein. And, it, and it's a perfect human protein. It's like perfectly matches the amino acid profile in your body there you go there's a good bodybuilder myth for you that would catch on if, if uh, any of the top pros said it all right guys um this is this is just silly you're going to go through the trouble to buy baby food as an intro workout instead of just eating normal food and, and again baby food and stuff you're dealing with oh because it's got vegetables and things in it i mean if we want to get technical down to brass tacks there's data that shows that too many antioxidants immediately during or after your training can actually inhibit training response. So all that vitamin C and stuff in there is not a deal. In fact, anyone based on that data who's taken a vitamin C supplement after they train is shooting themselves in the foot. Um, but back over to the point. Back over to the point. No, this is absolutely ludicrous. This, this is a sort of nonsense that you expect from the bodybuilding world you're going to go through the trouble. You know, leave the baby food for the babies. Go eat normal adult food. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Quit stealing babies' food. I know bodybuilders are a bunch of big babies, so it fits the personality, but still. Um, <laughs> God, I guess it's better than supplements. All right, I'm, I'm just done with that. Next question. Opinions on pause front squats. I don't see the point. Why do most people front squat? Because it's it's allows you to use a lighter weight, uses less posterior chain, all of that stuff on your squatting. And it carries over very, very well to Olympic lifting. Like front squats is really something you should master if you're going to go do Olympic lifting. All the Olympic lifts, though, you need to just learn to use that stretch reflex on it, right? Furthermore, what's the biggest problem we run into with pause squats, even with a back squat? forced to reduce the weight slightly. Now, that can be beneficial because it forces you to learn to get tight and stay tight in the bottom. Um, because of the racked position and the nature of a front squat, you're going to have to reduce the front squat substantially already. You're getting to a point that there, there's no reason to do this. I, I, from a training perspective, no, I just I can't see the point of programming front squats. If you're a strength athlete, or a lifter or anyone else, you're already doing front squats as an assistance movement. You, you want it to carry over to your back squat. Maybe you feel like you need more quad or thoracic or something going on that you feel that the front squat can address with less total loading than your back squat. But if you're going to lose a stretch reflex from it, um, you're not, you're not going to get as much out of it. You're really not. And you, you just have to reduce the weight so substantially on a paused front squat. And maybe if it's a if it's helping some weak point for an Olympic lifter specifically, maybe as again a very sport specific weak point training, but for, for someone using it as a general hypertrophy or strength or assistance movement for their back squat, which is what most of you are going to be front squatting for, because it because it is an inferior strength and hypertrophy exercise to the back squat. Um, I, I just wouldn't recommend this. Go ahead and use a stretch reflex. All right, next question. Rip a toe pushes hard for people to train the power clean to develop explosiveness. Is it really that important to develop explosive strength if you're not an athlete? What benefits could be had for the average Joe to train to be more explosive 
than he can't get with regular strength training. Um, well, here's, here's the thing. We should all train to be more athletic. We should all train to be more athletic. Look, speed, strength, and explosiveness are important. Now, the point that we will get to is how do we want that explosiveness to carry over? Um, the power clean has its own technical issues with it. And it has a learning curve and everything else. Power clean is a great exercise. I see no reason at all for athletes not to do it. I think that dynamic effort work though, and this is my original point I made years ago, I stepped away from it for a couple years and have come back around full circle and I do it again. And I did this for, for years and years. I supported dynamic effort work for over a decade. Um, having messed with the different things and being older and hopefully wiser than I was even a few years ago, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say, I, I think doing real dynamic effort work, speed squats and things with bands, chains, uh, all of those things, I think that's going to give you better rates of force production and explosiveness, even even really learning to push press. All of that stuff, I think, is going to give you a better training for explosiveness than some of these Olympic lifts. And I'm not saying they're not good, good lifts. I'm not saying they don't have their place. They absolutely do. And I think particularly for field athletes because of the jump and everything involved. But if you're just trying to train general explosiveness, I think dynamic effort work is probably a better use of your time in that regard. And it's going to carry over better to the lifts you're more likely to be doing. So you're going to get an overall better training effect. Well, that's just my opinion on it. Um, and I'm not saying that my opinion is right or wrong. There's a lot of ways to program stuff even for athletes. Um, and a lot of different successful methods with these things. And coaches have used both methods very successfully for, for many elite athletes. But I do see some of the better coaches out there and even guys training people for NFL and stuff, I'm seeing more of a tendency towards things like the, the dynamic band box squats and things instead of cleans and snatches. But uh, again, subject to debate, subject to debate, those are still mainstays for field athletes and they still work. Now, what I would say though, as far as again, your point of, of athleticism, I think everyone should try to be a little more athletic. You should all try to be a little more athletic, all right? That's not a bad thing. You should all want to be more explosive. Hell, it'll even help with your overall strength. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time in part two.